Hello and welcome to Region Locked. It's tough to come up with an original concept for games as time goes on, while inspiration from games that already exist can lead to expanding on pre-existing ideas, creating what a developer believes to be a superior product, it can be difficult to forego looking at the past to make something for the future. Today, we're looking at a game which, on first inspection, would seem to provide an early draft of a concept which we've seen in the likes of the zombie survival series Dead Rising. Today, we look at Vampire Panic. Vampire Panic was released exclusively to Japanese audiences in 2004 for the PlayStation 2, having been developed by Alpha System and published by Sammy Studios. Alpha System are probably best known for their later work with Bandai Namco for the Tales of franchise, and with regards to Sammy, we'll get to them later. Based on the real reaction to a tuberculosis outbreak during the 19th century called the New England Vampire Panic, though of course having little grounding in reality, the game is based in the year 1806, when a small town by the name of Incel, located in the kingdom of Burkgard, is being terrorised by monsters. These monsters, known as bugs, come into existence as a result of a vampire who has risen in the area. The player takes on the role of the ISLA, or International Spiritual Liberators Association, a group dedicated to eliminating vampire threats wherever they might be through exorcism. ISLA had previously magically sealed the vampire, but somebody has seemingly broken the seal. With the sudden breakdown of operations in Incel, the ISLA have sent three members of their squad to protect and save the villagers while simultaneously uncovering the truth behind the vampire's sudden reappearance. These agents are Rusty, a young swordsman who has very little experience when it comes to exorcism, though he is skilled with a blade. Rusty is a descendant of a family of knights, leading to a strong sense of justice and a strong pull to do all that he can to protect the innocent. Mary, a girl whose mother was bitten by a vampire just before she was born, giving her the mysterious power to transform on her own accord. She was raised by ISLA to help combat against the vampires and Abby, a gunman agent and the only one capable of taking out enemies from a distance. He has been badly injured during the game's opening events. They are joined by another member of the team, Jin, who has strong magical powers capable of containing the spread of a vampire's bite. Jin becomes seriously injured after an encounter with the vampire and is no longer capable of fighting. The player is tasked with escorting various panicked villagers who have found themselves spread across the game's map, taking them back to a safe house found just outside the town's gate. While working to save these townsfolk, the ISLA must also find some way of defeating the vampire and resealing him. The game involves third-person combat, with a heavy emphasis on working out efficient routes to take throughout the game's story to rescue as many townsfolk as possible. While the ISLA agents work together, they must seek out villagers individually. The player is able to switch between the characters from the safe house, with some townsfolk only responding to certain characters. Each character also has a unique skill that only they can use. Rusty is capable of guarding, Mary can transform to increase her power and speed, though stamina won't regenerate while she is in her seemingly demonic state, and Abby is simply able to reload his gun. Abby's skill is, of course, that he simply has a gun. The game's main objective is saving villagers. By talking with a villager, they may immediately ask to follow the player, or it's possible they will need some convincing. This can range narratively, but often their request is simply that the player find another person before they will follow. As these villagers are not trained fighters, they don't have a large amount of health or stamina, leading to them being a huge liability out in the field. Some villagers may even die from just a few hits, and considering the player is also capable of attacking them intentionally or not, this can become an issue. Running will use up a villager's stamina, and if they are hit, they will run away in a blind panic. Considering the game's use of friendly fire against these townsfolk, it's very easy to unintentionally kill them whilst trying to target an enemy. Villagers can, however, be instructed either to stay and wait for the player, or told to follow. Throughout the game's maps are various herbs that can be used either to recover health or stamina. They can also be taken to an apothecary back in the safe house who will combine them into stronger potions, capable of greater healing or even increasing the player's maximum health or stamina. One issue, however, is that these herbs are located in specific areas, and while the player can immediately pick them up, doing so has its own drawbacks. 
These herbs mature and change over time, so holding off on picking them may be for the best, should the player be looking for a specific coloured herb to use in alchemy. These herbs aren't simply plants, and are in fact mythological mandrakes, strange plants which let out a cry when plucked. By picking them, you significantly increase an alert gauge on screen. Performing many actions will increase this gauge, from picking herbs to killing enemies. Once full, the vampire will become aware of your presence and make an appearance, attempting to draw your blood or the blood of those following you. The player may be able to simply run away if the vampire appears, though this may not be quite as simple depending on the circumstances. Sometimes the vampire may even attempt to trick the player, such as taking the appearance of a villager until the player comes close. Some residents have already been bitten by the vampire when you find them, which not only increases the vampire's power, but also puts them under a time limit to return to the safe house. Once there, Jin is able to cure them of their affliction. If they aren't brought back to the safe house in time, they will transform and will need to be killed by the player. The player is of course also able to be bitten themselves, and if this happens, they will need to quickly find their way back to Jin in order to have the disease cured, otherwise it's game over. In Incel, a blacksmith can be found who will upgrade the player's weapons with any ore that has been obtained, or is often given as a reward from rescuing villagers, but can also be readily found in various crates or barrels. During the game's events, it becomes clear that the safe house won't remain safe for long. The player must work out a means of escape for the villagers before a day has passed, otherwise the effort will result in complete failure. After completing the game, the player is able to play through with any weapons obtained in their previous attempts, as well as unlocking an additional mode called Vampire Side, giving the player the chance to play through the game, taking on the role of the vampire and trying to regain as much power as possible by sucking the blood of the villagers. Each villager's blood is assessed based on its purity, rewarding the player with a different amount of strength depending on how pure the drawn blood is. The members of ISLA will also be roaming the game's maps, trying to track down and dispatch the vampire. The same year that Vampire Panic was released in Japan, Sammy, the game's publisher, bought a controlling share of Sega, creating the new holding company, Sega Sammy Holdings Inc. Both Sega and Sammy would then become subsidiaries of this holding company, with both acting independently, though Sammy would later relinquish their video game business to Sega in order to focus on pachinko machines. Effectively, this means that the copyright of any Sammy published video games were transferred over to Sega. Considering the game's relative obscurity, we genuinely found almost no articles from English outlets, it isn't hugely surprising that the game was only released in Japan. Sammy had very few English published games, with the exception of Guilty Gear, particularly so during the early 2000s. Whilst the rights to the game were handed to Sega during the company's merger, it was unlikely that Sega would see much reason to translate and publish the game, particularly as the PS2 had continued to age during the period when the legal rights were shifting, and the game would have no longer seemed particularly impressive for the system. Another element to the game that may have caused some contention is the fact that the player is not only able to negligently fail at their task of protecting both babies and children, but is also able to directly murder them by targeting and attacking them. In fact, during the unlocked vampire side mode, the player is greatly rewarded for drawing more pure blood, that of a child's. The encouragement of violence towards children has often been a huge concern for censors in the Western world, and this would have likely caused a lot of concern had plans been made to localize the title. But beyond everything, it's also possible that the game was simply not a big hitter. While we couldn't obtain sales data, the actual numbers would have been heavily skewed by the inclusion of a demo for the PlayStation 2 Berserk game. Most promotion of Vampire Panic was in the fact that the game came with a demo for Berserk. In 2020, fan translation group Transgen published an English translation patch for the game, led by Saito. They decided to translate the title despite it looking like a relatively dull or boring game at first glance, but they quickly discovered that it is a rather unique experience with varied gameplay. We played through this game over on twitch.tv forward slash did you know gaming. Though at the time we were playing through it blind, we slowly began to learn more about the game and our audience helped us to understand. If you'd like to help participate and watch us play through these games before they come out on our YouTube channel, be sure to follow us over on Twitch. 
thanks for watching. I hope that you enjoyed this episode. It was a really fun game to play through. You might be interested in some other region locked games, so check out the link on screen. Don't forget to leave a like or a comment. Don't forget to subscribe. Most of all though, don't forget to look after yourself. These are trying times and we're all just trying to get by. So look out for each other, look out for yourself, and don't forget to uh, stay healthy, stay strong, stay strain.